Shalom. Today I'd like to share a Bible quote with you about the two witnesses that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 11. Many people have tried to guess who these two individuals might be, but no one knows for certain. In this table, we're going to look at the possibility of Enoch and Elijah, because they are the only two people in Scripture that never experienced a natural death. And this is going to be part one of two. There are so many relevant words in this table that I decided to put them in two separate presentations. So in this presentation, we'll be looking at Revelation chapter 11, where it talks about these two witnesses, and we'll see what words from this chapter appear in this Bible code table. In part two, we'll look at some other scripture passages that talk about end time scenarios, like Daniel chapter 9 and Revelation chapter 13. And in part two, we'll also look at some of the important Bible verses that are running through this Bible code matrix. So this is a very small table. As far as Bible code tables go, it's only a skip of 138, and it's found in the book of Deuteronomy. So we have Enoch here in the red lettering going up, and then right beside it is and Elijah going down. And they're exactly right beside each other, which is very significant in and of itself. Now we're going to read one paragraph at a time from Revelation chapter 11. Take note of the words that are underlined in each paragraph, and we'll then turn to the Bible code and see where these words are located in the table. So verses 1 to 3 say, Then I, that's the Apostle John, was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there, but leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months, and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. So here we have temple going down, same skip as the access term. Mishkan, or sanctuary, or tabernacle, is in the orange, going up. The altar is here, in the plain text of scripture. And then you would need the priests, the Kohenim, to perform the tasks and rituals of the sanctuary. And the Kohenim is here in the burgundy lettering going down diagonal. Now the holy city is Jerusalem and it's here in the golden lettering and it's very important that that city's name is in this table because that's where this happens with the two witnesses. The witnesses are here in the blue lettering going to the right and they're clothed in sackcloth and here in the orange is sackcloth. And it says they will prophesy for 1260 days or 42 months. And this works out to be three and a half years, which would be the first half of the seven years of tribulation. Now we'll go to verses 4 to 6 of Revelation 11. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, Fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven, so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. So they are called olive trees. And we have the word olive here, the same skip as the access term. And the word trees is in this green lettering going up diagonal. Olive trees is even in the plain text of scripture here, going to the right. These men are called lampstands, which is menorah. And here we have menorah going up, a vertical skip of four lines. And then the second menorah starts here, 
sharing the resh in the other menorah, going up diagonal. And then what do you use in menorah to keep it burning? Well, you use olive oil. And olive oil is in the plain text of scripture down here. And if someone tries to harm them, they're able to shoot out fire from their mouths. Fire or the flame is here going down diagonal. And it can also be tongue of fire, which is pretty amazing. And then crossing over in this yellow is the word firefighting or fire extinguishing, which is kind of like humorous in a way. Another passage of scripture that is possibly talking about these same two witnesses is Zechariah chapter 4 verses 11 to 14, which says, and this is the prophet Zechariah speaking, then I asked the angel, what are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the lampstand? Again, I asked him, what are these two olive branches beside the two gold pipes that pour out golden oil? He replied, do you not know what these are? No, my Lord, I said. So he said, these are the two who are anointed to serve the Lord of all the earth. So the book of Zechariah also calls them two olive trees, just like the book of Revelation. Okay, now we'll move on to the next paragraph in Revelation 11. This is verses 7 to 10. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. So there's a beast that comes out of the bottomless pit, and here is the abyss, and it's kind of right in the center of the table. And this beast overcomes the two witnesses, and conquering or overcoming or overpowering is here in the purple, going to the right, to die. The two witnesses die. We have Sodom here in this dark brown, going up diagonal. Egypt is in the plain text of scripture. Our Lord who was crucified, well, that was Yahusha, and it, he's here in the purple, going down diagonal. And it says that all the people in the earth will see it. And so now that we have the internet, that makes sense that they can see it on a, an internet broadcast. And here we have broadcast going to the left. And they give gifts to one another. And here is the word gift. Verses 11 to 13 say, Now after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. In the same hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. So these two men get revived or resuscitated. And here in the light brown, we have that word. Great fear or terror is in this pink going down. And exactly parallel to it, here it is here too. Earthquake is here in the pink at the bottom. The word fear or awe is here in the blue going up. So that's the end of part one. Be watching for part two, which hopefully will be out within a few days. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with others. Shalom and blessings to you all.